Okay, I've started recording. Um, so, first of all, welcome to Rensselaer and congratulations on uh, getting accepted to the Civil Engineering Program. It's very exciting and I can't wait to meet all of you in person very soon. Um, to kick off, this webinar is predominantly a chance for you to ask me questions as we go through the material. Um, so I'm going to kind of focus on leaving a lot of room at the end for those questions. Um, and, you know, you have the re registration guide that can really support you with figuring out those fall classes. Um, so we'll touch upon that a little bit um, and, and other resources that are going to be really helpful to you as you kind of lay the pieces for next week when you sit down to register. Um, to start off, I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to we're going to use the registration guide as a guide for this conversation. Um, you know, make sure that I'm staying on track and not going into any tangents. Um, so this should look pretty familiar to you. Um, as we scroll down, a couple of things I want to cover. So the SOE Hub, as you've probably figured out up to this point, is your primary um, advising resource as a first year at Rensselaer in the School of Engineering. Um, and I'm your advisor. So for the first year, I'm going to be the person that you'll go to for all your academic questions and concerns and figuring out your schedules. Um, when you have mandatory meetings, you'll have them with me. And the goal that you and I will have by the end of your spring semester is that you have enough of an understanding of your curriculum that by the time you transfer over to your faculty advisor, you feel great about what you want to do and what you need to do before you graduate. Um, of course, that's a long time off and we have a lot of work to do before then. So I'm just going to scroll down and we'll get started. So curriculum planning, you have your major template. The major template is a list of all the courses that you are required to take um, in order to graduate as a civil engineer. You can, of course, add to your curriculum when there's room, um, but everything you see is, is definitely what you need to take. I've paused here because I want to go over prereqs and coreqs really quickly. This, oh, sorry, I keep <laughs> hiccuping. Um, these prereqs and coreqs are some of the most important elements to coming up with your schedule and creating your four-year plan. When you're creating that four-year plan, you want to make sure that your plan matches the plan of the prereqs for a course. So, for example, to take Calculus 2, you got to take Calculus 1, right? So, all throughout your template, there are those instances. Um, and for the fall semester, we're going to talk about what courses should really be there. Um, as you as you are starting out and because you're going to need them pretty quickly. So this is your major template. Um, so again, we're looking at this fall semester here. So on the engineering or civil engineering curriculum, you'll see chemistry, um, civil 1200, engineering graphics for civil engineering, um, engineering 1100, which is introduction to engineering analysis. You'll hear me say IEA. Uh, Calculus 1, Math 1010, and then our Haas elective, which is your general education requirement. Um, so keeping all those classes in mind, we're going to keep scrolling down. Um, this breaks it down for you again. So these are the courses that we expect you to take. And there's also a little breakdown of what, what other options are, because I'll say it now and I'll probably say it a few times. You want to have a plan A, B, C, D as you're coming into registration. So this is very specific for you as a civil engineer. So this is the course you want to get into. Um, it is fall only. Um, so you want to make sure that it is in your fall schedule. Um, but there is a backup option. So if something doesn't work out for whatever reason, you can take engineering 1200. It's just not specific to you civil engineers. Um, engineering 1100, which is the IEA, the Introduction to Engineering Analysis, is really, really important for you to take in your first semester as a civil engineer. It is one of those prerequisites. So there's a, a bunch of courses kind of headed your way that require this course before you can start them. So you want to get it done pretty early. Um, math, you know, oops, it sounds like someone's your microphone just turned on. Please make sure your mics are muted. Let me see. All right. Um, all right, back to this. Okay, so um, math. So you all have you have uh, math requirements. So this is kind of the order of those math courses. So if you're coming in with APs, you might not start with Calculus 1. You might start with Calculus 2. For the science course, this is where there's a little bit of a um, 
a decision that you can make. Um, so chemistry is what you saw in the template, um, but physics is also a course that goes really well with this course here. If you haven't recently taken a physics course um, or an AP physics course, you might choose to take this alongside IEA. That's perfectly fine. You just really need to finish this course and chemistry by the end of your first year. You really need to have physics done by then too. Um, but I say that so that you can you can do that switch if you like to. Um, I'm going to go back to Haas in a minute, um, but everything I just said very quickly is said very slowly in this video. So please take the time to watch this. Um, it, it hopefully will answer a lot of your questions and help you make some decisions. Um, and if not, I'm here. I am here all summer and I'm waiting for your emails. So don't hesitate to reach out if you have those questions. Um, what I want to do, so we're going to go through this just briefly, and then I'm actually going to build a mock schedule in YAX. Um, but I want to make sure that you kind of fully appreciate what is in this guide for those of you who might have questions. So if you're someone coming in with APIV or other transfer credits, really take the time to go through this, watch this video, um, because there are decisions that you're going to want to make. Um, and you might be able to move through your curriculum a little bit faster for, so, for those of you who might want to add like a minor to your degree. Um, that could open up some space for you. Um, your humanities, we're going to touch upon this a few times today, but this is the section that really kind of spells this out for you. This is a great video to walk you through it. Um, and we know that there's a lot to it, so never feel like you have to watch this and understand what you're doing. For your fall semester, you want to look for this. And I will, I'll say this again in a, a few different ways to help you remember, um, but you want to do an, inter, an interdisciplinary HOS course, which is an IHSS course for that first fall semester. Even if you're coming in with AP HOS credits, so if you did like a social science type course or an art course, you can only apply two of those classes to your HOS degree. Um, but... Even if you're you're bringing them in, you still need to take that IHSS Haas course in your first semester. Um, and the reason for this is you have a Haas pathway that you're going to need to get started, and these IHSS classes are reserved for first year students. Um, so that's that's going to be part of your goal. Another reason why we really like the um, Haas course in your first semester too is because rather than another really heavy math and science course as you're transitioning from high school to college, it gives you an additional four credits. So you get up to that 16, 17 credit area without having, you know, potentially another college level um, like math or science course, as I said. Uh, so that, that that's kind of a little bonus for you there. So for those of you who are, you know, you know registration is coming up next week, but you're still really confused on how you're actually going to sit down and do it. This is the section to really pay attention to. We've broken it down into four steps, which are set up your student information system, create a mock schedule in EAX, clear your financial agreement hold, and register for courses with SIS. So I know that probably sounds like I'm speaking a foreign language. All of this is going to become really familiar to you. Um, and if you read this section, it, it'll start to be really familiar to you. Um, in our webinar today, we are going to do this. We're going to build a mock schedule in YAX by, based on the chemistry or the civil engineering um, major template. Um, but for the rest of it, oh, and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through registering with this. But for the rest of it, really read these sections. Um, so how you set up your student information account, which you could do today if you haven't done it already. Um, you know, the YAX, which I'll go back to in just a second. Um, here's how you clear your financial agreement hold in SIS. And then this is another video that walks you through how to register for courses. So there's a lot of resources there to get you on the right track. Um, all right, so let's head over to YAX, um, which is this resource here. Um, I also want to pause and quickly bring up, um, if we go back to the civil engineering guide, there was a link well, I don't know exactly where I was, um, that brings up this. So this is another planning sheet. If you're really, you know, you kind of are looking for a different way um, to figure out what classes you need to take. You know, everybody learns in different ways, which is totally, like, acceptable and fine and normal. This is another way. So if you follow the one, two, three, four, five, you'll see what I've been mentioning. So chemistry 1100, right? If you have chemistry 1100, you'll move to the next step, which is down here, which it says physics 1100, right? which we've kind of touched upon. Engineering 1100 is the IEA, 
this is your CAD class. Here's how you walk through your math. So this is in the guide, and you can print it out and write all over it as you are or making the decisions about your fall semester. All right, so I touched upon that, and now I'm going to move forward. So YAKS, there's a couple ways to use YAKS and search for classes. So of course, you can start on this screen here where we can see School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. We can see the School of Science. We can see the School of Engineering. Um, so if we look at your exact template, um, we know that chemistry is the first thing on here. So we can see chemistry here. Um, and right there is chemistry one. So if you click chemistry one, everything below will be highlighted. Um, these numbers here are the section. These numbers that start with an A are the CRNs, which are a really important number for you to know. This is your faculty. This is the number of seats. And this is the days and times of the week that the class is being held. Um, an important note about the seats is that YAKS is not live on the day of registration. There's actually a lag. YAKS pulls all the information on the classes from this. So, there's no way it can possibly keep up with the amount of changes that are happening to these courses on the day of registration. So that's why if you look in the guide, we've kind of have this image where on one side of the screen we have X and on the other side of the screen we have CIS. This is a great thing to do when you sit down to actually register for your courses. So that way, when you're over here looking at the schedule you built and you see that CRN, you can go over to CIS and say, all right, is that class still have six seats left in it. If it does, great, I'll register for it. If it doesn't, I'll have my plan B. Um, and plan Bs are really important. You wanna have a plan A, B, C, D, and I'll show you exactly how easy it is to make those plans. All right, so we've clicked this. If we click on schedule, we will see that chemistry has shown up in our fall schedule. We can see it right down here below, the information from before, and we can see that we have nine options um, of classes that we can go through. And when you click this, they move around. Okay, so to get back to that menu, we can click the YAKS rainbow over here. Um, and we know that we wanna do a math course here, so we go back to the School of Science, we go to Mathematics, and there we are, Calculus One. If you scroll down, you see all the other math classes. Um, you guys, you're gonna be hanging right out up here, though, for the first semester. Maybe Calculus Two, maybe you're gonna head into multi or Diffy Q. <laughs> Sorry. I advise the undeclared too. Everyone has a little bit of a different math requirement. Um, all right. So if we click on the title here, we have selected all our options below. You'll see here that we have zero seats, zero seats. Do not worry about that at all right now. It'll all be updated um, by the time you get into your registration period. And you can use SIS to look at those sections to see what the seat numbers actually are. Right now, really all you want from them is the course number, the CRN, and then when it's happening during the week. So we're gonna get schedule again, and we've seen that math has been added to our schedule. Okay, so another way that we can add courses is we don't even have to necessarily leave this section. I think a mic might have become unmuted. Can everyone quickly check? Okay, okay, so. Another way to search rather than heading the rainbow is if you know the course name, which you all do because it's on the major template, you can actually type it right here. So I'm going to go Civil 1200, which is our graphics and CAD course, our one credit. Um, hit enter, and there it is. So we have one section of this course. It is Mondays from 6 to 8 p.m. We're going to hit schedule, and there it is. All right. We also have IEA, which remember, for civil engineers, that is very important that you take IEA in the fall semester. We hit schedule and there it is. So we're starting to build our schedule. Okay, so this is our math courses, or yeah, our math courses and our engineering courses. Um, the only thing we really need to add now is our Haas, right? So I'm actually gonna click this rainbow so we can look at the Haas section. So these are all the Haas classes, everything that we see in here. Arts, cognitive science, language, uh, psychology, writing. Um, as mentioned earlier, the IHSS is really the area where you wanna stick to right now. So we're gonna click on that. Um, the reason why you wanna stick to the IHSS course is because um, of a, a requirement that you have called the pathways. So Karen's gonna help me out by dropping a link into the chat to all of the pathways that we have. Um, look through them, 
go after what sounds interesting to you. Look at what those first classes are, those IHSS courses are that re the pathway requires, and you should find them right in here. Um, I'm going to click on Exploring Music at Rensselaer, which is actually a pretty popular one. Um, we can see that we have that one section, right? Um, we're going to add that to our schedule. And right now, even with math and science and engineering in our HAAS, we still have 380 options to click through. So this is the part where you really get to start thinking about what you want your week to look like. It's different than high school where you have that regimented schedule. You can have breaks in the day. You can kind of decide you're a morning person or a night person. Um, you know, if you're an athlete, you have other schedule um, uh, restrictions. You know, you have to have your class, last class end by 350, which is you can do that. And you can reach out to me if you have trouble figuring out how to do that. Um, but this is how you get your plan A, your plan B, your plan C, your plan D, right? You have all of these options here. The numbers you need are right here. These are the numbers that oop, you're going to bring with you over to SIS. On the day of register, registration, you're going to plug them in, and that's how you're going to enroll in these classes. Um, you can also come down here. And so, for example, as an athlete, you know, you can't do those morning classes. You can look for the classes that start at a time where you can't be and you can unselect them. Or once you're here for a while, you might discover your favorite professors. So you might go through and be like, oh, I want to make sure that I'm in every class that, well, I was going to say Keith Taylor is teaching, but he's teaching all of them. So that doesn't work. <laughs> um, but, you know, you might say, all right, I really like um can you ski, right? So like, I'm going to select any section that is not this professor. So as you go through, it'll limit the options a little bit more, which might help you kind of find better plans faster. Um, but however you use this tool, it's totally up to you. It's an awesome, awesome resource. Um, and it's kind of fun too. I, at least I think it's fun um, in terms of building your schedules. Okay. So once you have these CRNs, the next step is, again, we're going to have EX on one side of our screen, and we're going to have SIS on the other side of our screen. But for now, I'm just going to open up a PowerPoint um, to walk you through what happens when you sit down to enroll. So I have a PowerPoint because what I see when I log into SIS is different than what you see. So we wanted to make sure that you really had a good idea of what's waiting for you. The first time you log in, you're going to use your RIN number and your birthday. Um, again, that is in the guide. So you can look at that guide and use that part to get yourself into SIS. Um, and if you have any trouble logging in or you lock yourself out, which does happen, don't worry about it. Um, registrar is the resource that you are going to need to get back in. Um, so you can give them a call. I believe this link either goes to their website or their email. Or if you're really not sure, you can always email me and I'll give you the right contact information. I'm happy to help you figure that all out. OK, so we log in. This is what you see when you first log in. We're going to go to Student Menu. We're going to click on Register, Add, or Drop. We're going to make sure we're looking at the right semester. So that's the fall 2019. Um, and then this is where we put in our CRNs. Um, you really want to put all the CRNs at the same time. So if you remember on YAX, we had that whole list. So you would put the 888 in and then the next 888 number in. Um, once you get them all in there, you click Submit Changes. We move forward. This is what you'll see if you have successfully registered for a course. Um, whoop. Sorry. Um, if you see any sort of like note about a course, like maybe it's re or a major restricted, maybe there's no more room in the course, never take that as like a closed door. Sometimes there's an option. Um, and if you reach out to me, we can kind of talk about what those options are. I'll definitely always let you know if, nope, you really just can't get into that class. Um, but there are, there are ways that we can really, you know, if you really need a course, you really want a course, we might be able to work it out. Um, so like I said, just email me and I'll, I'll see what I can do. All right. After you get all the CRNs in there, you want to double check your schedule. So you'll click view weekly schedule day and time grid. And this is what you'll see. Um, well, kind of. <laughs> you have to put in a date for the fall semester. So if you look up here, it says September 4th, 2017. So obviously you're going to make that say 2019. If you just click the view schedule, it's going to be blank because it's going to be looking at today and today you don't have classes, right? Because you haven't gotten here yet. But if you put it out into September, you'll see something that should very much reflect what you built in YAC. Um, you're going to see the course name, you're going to see the CRNs, the time, and you're even going to see the building and classroom it is in. Okay, a couple notes, and I'm sorry that this is cut off right here. 
Um, Karen's actually going to help me by typing in uh, the the pieces of the important pieces of in information that you need. So again, put all the CRNs in at the same time before you hit submit changes. It makes it go faster for you. So if you're in a rush to get the last few seats, you don't have to worry about like, you know, the one, 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 right? Um, and then there are some classes that require you to add two CRNs at the same time. It'll actually not let you register for them unless you have both. Um, biology isn't really going to come up for you guys in your first semester, but you do have biology and a lab. In fact, you may not take biology at all as a civil engineer, but we'll talk about that when you're on campus and looking at your four-year plan. Um, and then physics, right? So we have physics one, which is physics 1100. And then the number you can't see here, I, Karen probably just typed it in, is physics 1960. So you have a, a mentoring session um, in the fall semester with a physics one class. If you choose to do physics over chemistry, you just want to add that at the same time too. Okay. Um, and as I mentioned before, YAX is not going to be able to keep up with the seat numbers on the day that you register. So you want to use SIS and YAX at the same time to ensure that courses that you think are open are actually open. Um, and if they're not open anymore, you can quickly go to your plan B before you actually are entering in the info just to save yourself a little bit of time. Okay. So. If you get locked out, if weird things are happening with your registration, um, you can absolutely reach out to registrar at rpi.edu. That is the registrar's office. You are more than welcome to also touch base with me or copy me into your emails. Um, I am here as a resource to you, especially right now when all of this is new and a foreign language to you and you don't really know what's going on. Um, so never feel like you have a dumb question or a silly question and reach out to all the resources available to you. So register at rpi.edu is one of those that you can take advantage of. Okay, before we go to q and I wanna pop back to the guide. Um, just to quickly scroll through the rest of this. So this is how you're figuring out how you register or register for classes. And then at the end, we have all these useful resources. So this civil, civil engineering advising handbook is going to walk you through the major here at Rensselaer a little bit more. Um, it is going to take you to the class of 2022. The class of 2023 will be updated by the time you get here in the fall. It's something we do over the summer when students aren't on campus. Um, but you can absolutely look at that now to get a good idea of what you're going to be doing when you get here and kind of the, the culture, the Rensselaer culture of that. Um, also, you know, we have our academic calendar that's right here. So if you're interested in, you know, when the deadlines are, or if you want to know when Thanksgiving break starts, you can click on there and find those dates. Um, the acronym dic dictionary. So we have a lot of acronyms on this campus, so many so that there is actually an acronym dictionary. Um, use this. Don't feel like you ever have to know what people are saying. Ask questions. Sometimes I speak in acronyms. And I, I really try not to when you guys first get here so that you can catch up to the language before I start throwing things at you like IEA, which is that engineering 1100 class. Um, a little bit further down, you'll see like our website, you know, important links. Uh, for academic resources and our social media. We're already putting up posts that speak to you as the class of 2023. If you want to engage with us this way, absolutely go for it. Um, and as I've said a few times, I'm here. So if you have any questions, if we get to the Q&A part and you really think that your question um, is, is more of a personal nature and you want to ask about that directly, email me. Do not hesitate. Um, I'm genuinely waiting for your emails right now so that we can get you started and ready for next week. Um, or pick up the phone and give me a call. I'm sitting at my desk, so I should be here. Um, and if you book an appointment with me, which you will be doing when you get on campus, this is how you get in front of me. Um, it makes sure that I'm actually sitting at my desk if you want to call me in a more formal way. I mean, I'm an informal person, but formal in the sense that <laughs> I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> I won't be walking around campus. Um, all right. So with all that being said, I think I've touched on everything I want to say. So let's do that Q&A thing. Um, let me scroll through and see if I missed anything in the chat. No. Oh, yeah, Karen put a very good point up. For some reason, the, the catalog is not updated, and it says that chemistry is only offered in the fall. That is not true. You can take it in the fall or spring semester. So if you do choose to take physics this fall, 
don't worry, you'll be able to take chemistry in the spring and have all of that taken care of before the end of your first year. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop talking to give you time to think of and or ask questions. Okay, first question. When should we transfer AP credits? Before or after this year's scores are released? Um, well, I think that they won't send AP credits until the scores are done. Um, so I think it, it, you know, there's no real rush to get those scores sent our way. Um, Cause when you go to register, a lot of times your scores won't come in and we are so aware of this, which is why there's so much flexibility with the, those of you who are bringing in AP credits. So if you do register for something and want to make a change, we're just going to make a change. It's that simple. Um, so I would say, wait till you get your score and then go on the college board and send them over. Um, one of the benefits of meeting with me um, at least one semester or once a semester is that we will go through your degree progress. So if you think that there's like a math credit or a chemistry credit that should have been transferred in, we'll actually see if that credit came in or not. And it's usually a very simple thing to quickly go back to college board and have them sent or however you're bringing those credits in. Um, good question. So wait till you get your grades, send them over. Okay, any other questions? I'll leave a little time so that you guys can type, so don't don't feel rushed. Okay, I have a few AP credits that would fill Haas requirements. Should I use these in later years in order to fill pathway requirements? This is such a good question. Okay, so. Absolutely, we're gonna use at least eight of those credits for your Haas requirements. So you have 20 credits you have to meet, so eight credits is two, um, two classes. So regardless of that, in your fall semester, do register for an IHSS course, because again, those courses are reserved for first years. So once you get to your sophomore year, we can't really look backwards, right, and take an IHSS course. Um, However, what you could do if you want to have a deeper conversation about where those credits will go and what they'll do for you on, on a personal note, Will, email me what you think you're coming in with and we can talk about how that'll hit a pathway. Um, because pathways are going to be free classes and you have, um, oh gosh, I had a mind blank, five classes in the hospital. Give it three for the pathway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, so three of those courses will go towards the pathway, but two of them are not. So those two classes you're bringing in very well might take care of the rest of your host requirement for you. Um, so it really depends upon A, what you want to do with the pathway, B, what you're coming in with, um, and then of course at the end of the day, what sounds the most fun to you and fits in your schedule. So Will, if you want to send me an email with that or anyone else who has something along those lines, let's, let's take a deeper look together. Awesome. Okay, Amanda. Why are there multiple teachers listed under one course for chemistry? That is a very good question, and I don't think I have a very succinct answer other than there are different labs. So I think you might have a professor for a course and then a different one in the lab or vice versa. Sometimes they really don't know until the start of a semester um, who's going to be teaching a certain section. It depends upon all the other classes that are going on and everything you know, kind of comes together. And right now our, our faculty are teaching classes. So it's, I, yeah, like I said, I don't have a succinct answer, but um, you kind of get used to that groove once you start and you figure out who your faculty are. Um, that's a great question. Any other questions out there? I will pause so that you have time to type. <laughs> Okay. Oh, here we got another question. Can I get math credit for AP statistics rather than management credit? No. Good question. So things come in as they come in. Um, and the reason behind it is basically whatever the content is in the course that you took has to match the content as it is here in RPI. So 
in order to get like calculus credit, the course would really have to be calculus focused because the statistics course is statistics focused. It does come in as a management credit, but I'll tell you something cool. If you do have that AP statistics course, there is an engineering statistics class that is on your um, curriculum. It actually is, is put into your, ooh, sorry, I have a hiccup, um, into your spring semester. Um, if you're looking at a template, uh, you might see it, which is engineering 2600. Your statistics course is really going to be a big benefit to you in that class. Um, so it's good that you have that. And then also that AP class, it goes into one of your free electives. So it gives you four credits that you don't have to think about. Um, and, you know, you might decide that you are interested in business or management, and that could come into play, too, if you declare a minor. Um, that's a good question, though. Content is everything. So if after your first year you think you want to do summer classes, which a lot of our students do because they kind of want to get some classes out of the way, um, that's how we decide what courses will come in and what they come in as. Um, actually, maybe Karen could quickly share a link to the transfer credit guide, just so you can kind of see how that works. Good question. You guys are asking great questions. Any other questions? Thanks, Karen. <laughs> and keep in mind, this guide might be a lot of information right now. You don't need to look at that until you're ready to, um, you know, if you want to do summer courses. But for those of you who are bringing in transfer credits, you'll find this tool really interesting. Um, it, can, it can give you a lot of answers to questions. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap it up, unless there's one more question out there. Um, so, have fun with this. Go on Yaks, build some schedules, come up with a few plans. Um, anytime you think you have a question, whether it's big or small, or you think it's silly, which it's probably not, email me. Um, you know, we will make sure that you are ready for registration next week. And keep in mind that no matter what you register for next week, there's a lot of time to kind of continue adjusting your schedule. So if you get a different score on your AP that you weren't expecting, um, we can change it. If you had some time to think about it and, and you want to do physics instead of chemistry, we can change it. Um, if you make a friend and you want to get in the same section as them, you know, all this kind of stuff, there's there's room to uh, make adjustments. So first of all, you will see me in person during student orientation. That's a time where we can readdress your schedule. And then the first two weeks of the fall semester are an add the period, which means we can get you into to a different section or add a different course. Um, and then, you know, I think the drop deadline is even like a month into the semester. So if you if you do like get into a course and you're like, oh man, I shouldn't have done like physics two, I should have done physics one, we can change it. Um, so don't don't worry too much about what's what you're going to register for next week. Um, it's basically the motto of that. Um, and keep me in the loop with anything you have on your mind. All right, I'm going to stop recording now. And